what we do here is go back, 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 back. My career as a content creator did not begin with the hyper focus on storytelling or video that it has today. The earliest Snapchat content I created was really more closely related to oil paintings and memes. They go together perfectly, right? More closely related to those than it was to filmmaking and videography. However, as I began collaborating with other creators and as Snapchat itself began to evolve, so did my snaps. Over the course of the past three years, I've downloaded hundreds of photo and video apps, troubleshooted countless editing problems, and experimented with pretty much every type of filmmaking and production I could imagine. All purely with my various, my, my, my army of smartphones. Now, pulling from that experience and with my projects like remaking Jurassic Park, Home Alone, my biggest projects, I want to walk you through all the tips and tricks needed to create a Hollywood style movie using only your start from, from start to finish, smart flow, using only your smart, f <laughs> using only your start, Ah, using only your smartphone from start to finish. Nailed it, let's go. <laughs> Move on to the title. What are we gonna be talking about today? Today I'm gonna walk you through what it's like to make a Hollywood style movie just using your smartphone. We're gonna talk about the three basic elements and I say basic, but I don't mean like basic, like basic Bay or basic AF. I mean the basic principles, the core principles, the curriculi in which you build upon an entire production. They are as follows. Pre-production, getting started. Production, doing it. And then post-production, the actual doing it. Everything that happens after you film, putting it together, making the beautiful baby that is, <sighs> so beautiful, your Hollywood style movie. And the only tool we're gonna be using is this blue tape, is this, is your smartphone. I have made a lot of big picture movies using only my smartphone. I've remade movies like Jurassic Park, Home Alone, Back to the Future, and the only thing I use is my smartphone. Now, mobile cinematography, kind of by its nature, is a more simplified version of filmmaking, but that doesn't mean you can't save yourself incredible amounts of time throughout the entire process by having a set plan. What's this? It's the book of everything you need to know before you get your pre-production started. Oh look, it's a list of four things you're gonna need. What's this? Oh, a goal, a vision, some help, and a plan of attack? Let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into that can of worms. The goal. What are you trying to do here? Are you doing a movie remake? Are you doing something completely, I mean, where is this gonna live? Is it gonna be on Snapchat? Is it gonna be on Instagram? Is it gonna be on YouTube? Are you gonna try to release it into a theater of some sort with a vor vertical orientation? I don't know, but you need to know before you get started because that is gonna influence every single other decision that you make. Once you have, a, once you have the goal in mind, once you know what you're gonna be producing, it's time to come up with a vision. What's the tone of this? What's the pace? How long is it gonna be? Is this going to be a five minute story? Is this gonna be a 10 minute story? What sort of you know color palettes do you want to use? Are you going to find props in real life? Are you going to go to antique stores? Are you going to make them out of foam like I did with these Jurassic Park night vision goggles? Um, thank you very much, Celia Snap, for both making them and letting me keep them. You have to have all of that in mind because again, it's going to influence the decisions that you make moving forward. And it's also very specifically going to influence how you devise what's next the help. If you are going to need to source all sorts of different props and costumes, you're going to need help for that. If you want help, it's going to save you a lot of time to get some help. I always get help with my projects like that. It's going to influence whether or not you're going to be dedicating your time to making these props. The whole timeline moving forward is going to be heavily influenced, influenced, influence, 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 influence. Everything about the pre-production is going to influence all of the steps moving forward. Speaking of help, who are your most trusted, talented, and patient, tolerant friends. Listen, I have had people standing out in the middle of the pouring rain, wearing rubber gloves, having a, a Home Depot lighting clamp attached to an umbrella in the shorts, in the middle of, the, uh, in the middle of October, because they wanted to make a movie with me and they were super patient. This is a trying, pr it, making a video, making a movie, doing something that is you're so passionate about, it's a trying task, and you're gonna need to have friends that both share that vision and are going to be patient with you because you gotta get a little bit mean with them. Nikki, are you zooming? <laughs> Try to. <laughs> Next up is a plan of attack. Having a storyboard is imperative. You're not just gonna fly blindly into the night of this production, not knowing what you're gonna do. Not only because will that have you know, awful consequences on the final product, but because you're gonna be wasting so much time. The immeasurably valuable asset of your time 
but the even more so immeasurably valuable asset of your friends and colleagues and peers time. So if you can collaborate with these people that share your vision, walk them through a storyboard that they get, they know the motions, it's going to save time and it's gonna make for a better product. Nikki. That was symbolically supposed to say we're going on a bit of a tangent here about props. When I'm making a movie, props are one of the most important things to make. I want it to look real or I want it to have an aesthetic that matches the rest of the tone of the movie. For Jurassic Park, I got together with my team, Celia, thank you so much, and we sat down for weeks making meticulously film accurate props. Props including this foam replica of the night vision goggles from Jurassic Park. We made fences. We made gates, we bought props, we converted model cars into accurate models from what we were seeing in the movies. We, I spent $100 on toy dinosaurs, $100 on arts and crafts supply, including um, you know, crepe paper, foam, markers, all for the sake of this movie. We made, we even made, <laughs> we even made to scale cardboard models of several vehicles. What I'm trying to say is production quality matters. The batteries died. If you're not taking every single aspect of this movie seriously, don't even bother. You have to be fully committed. I start and end with the props. Now that we've got all of the basics about how to get started out of the way, the next part is relatively simple. The basics of filming a movie on your smartphone. Great thing about smartphones today is they can film extraordinarily powerful footage. This phone right here, it films 4K video. Every minute of 4K video is about a gig of space. This is a 256, 256 gigabyte phone. That's a whole lot of storage, but you know what? I used about 100 gigs of 4K video when I reshot Jurassic Park, and that ended up being a 15 minute Snapchat movie. What I'm saying is you need to consider what you're gonna be doing with all of these assets that you have, organizing them. I suggest using little, little tricks like favoriting shots. Uh, in your gallery, favoriting shots that you know are gonna make it to the final cut, getting rid of the stuff that you know isn't gonna make it, definitely having an external hard disk of some sort, it's gonna be extraordinarily beneficial to you. There's a lot that your phone can do, but there's a lot that your phone can't do. One of those things that phones just say they don't do very naturally well is organize data. So when you're, when you're shooting, and I implore you, while you're shooting, let the camera roll. Just capture as much as possible. Get the B-roll. I know it sounds counterintuitive when you're dealing with a limited, limited amount of space on your phone, but you really wanna capture every single moment because you never know when something might go haywire, some clip might not have audio, you need a little bit of background, you need something, that B-roll, those, those, those bloop, worst case scenario, you've got a lot of bloopers. Now there are a lot of supplemental apps out there for filming, for creating content. Uh, you can make content directly in Snapchat and Instagram. You can, make direct, you can make content directly in Facebook. I like to use my phone's native video recorder. I think it's the best camera app out there. It shoots in 4K. Also, it seamlessly cooperates with the file management systems on your phone. Where do I get these wonderful toys? This little setup right here is the fundamentals of everything you're going to be doing with your movie making. This is a go, uh, this is a Joby tripod, Gorillapod Pro. Don't get the one that's not the Pro version because the little balls come out and, I, and then they never go back in. It's terrible. You're going to need a tripod, otherwise, how are you going to be in content that you're making? In addition to a tripod, because not all tripods, especially the professional grade ones, they don't come with phone attachments. So I recommend this one. I got it from the Apple Store. It's called a Mi Photo Lens or a Mi Photo. A little tripod phone attachment. You got 360, I think 360 degrees of motion. I swear by this one, I've used other ones. This is the absolute best. It goes on any tripod, big tripod, bigger tripod. It's everything you're gonna need. I've actually even screwed this thing to the back of a Nerf gun to make awesome POV, kind of like, you know, Call of Duty videos. That all being said, you're gonna need a tripod, you're gonna need something to attach your phone to that tripod. I'm just gonna give you a little heads up, this next part is lit. This was a gift from the folks over at b &H Photo. I did a lovely Snapchat collaboration with them. This is a Luxly Viola LED multicolored light. This took the production value of my Snapchat stories from Back to the Future. I Click right the there. for the flux capacitor. You need to hit 88 miles per hour. And All the way up to the Jurassic Park clip there. This thing can not only give you natural light that you control the temperature of, the brightness of, Whoa. But it also can give you a migraine instantly. But you can also do the full spectrum of colors. 
I think this is pretty friggin' rad. This can make it seem like there's a fire burning in your set. This can make it seem like it's day, like it's night, like it's raining, like it's foggy, like there's ectoplasm and residue all over the place in some sort of Ghostbusters type situation. The point is, this can do a lot for the production value of your project, and I highly suggest investing in one. This little ditty, I think, was about $300. Like I said, it was a gift. It's one of the best gifts I've ever received, but there are other options you can find, just color-changing LED lights. In general, though, lighting is the most important element of your production because, I mean, just look at some of the stuff that I did before I understood the importance of lighting. 1955, oh no, there's only one man that can help me, Doc Brown. Bye! I gotta go get Doc! But as soon as I understood that you can change the color and that lighting, I mean, think about it. This phone right here is not a DSLR. It doesn't have great low light setting. So the, the better you can make your lighting environment, the more light that can go into the phone's camera and capture the video, the better it's going to look. And if you're working with 4K video, you just need to be taking this into consideration. Some alternatives, obviously, light bulbs go with tungsten bulbs, they're daylight. And these wonderful clamp lights that I got from Home Depot, they're like 15 bucks a pop. We've got one over there, it's illuminating me like some sort of light. The point is, lighting matters. In fact, my good friend Greg Litley once said, <laughs> Infrared, why do you, you just need like good lighting. So just, that's the secret to everything. Okay. Aging, life, dating, good lighting. <laughs> get, you get bad news, we say good lighting. And now we have arrived at the most lonely and satisfying part of the whole production process, and that's post-production. Listen, if you're making a video on your phone and you're editing it on your phone, the fact of the matter is, after the tireless, sleepless nights of filming with your crew and after they've all gone home, you're gonna be sitting in a bunker by yourself editing a video on your smartphone, giving yourself arthritis, giving yourself terrible, terrible stress on your eyes, but it is the most satisfying thing because it's where you take the ingredients and you make the beautiful cake that you want to eat for the rest of your life. It's better than funfetti. The best apps you can be using for the editing process, iMovie and Perfect Video. Listen, I swear by iMovie. It can do almost everything that the regular iMovie on your computer can do, but just a few little things. Unfortunately, it always spits out a horizontally cropped video. So apps that supplement your supplemental app, like Perfect Video, bing, goes really well hand in hand with bing, iMovie. Good job with those graphics, Nikki. <laughs> Thanks. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Listen, if I'm telling you to record 100 gigabytes of 4K video for your 10 minute project, you're gonna have a lot of extra. Do things scene by scene, stitch them all together later. You don't wanna go from start to finish the opening credits to the closing credits. You don't wanna try to edit that whole video together. You'll drive yourself crazy. And ultimately, if you're filming in good quality, you're going to make a file that is so big those applications that you're using to edit them are going to become much less functional. You wanna to stick to about five gigs max per project, edit it up in iMovie. I love it because you can detach the audio, you can, it, it, it makes proxy files so that, or it actually, it uses the files on your phone so you can trim and then you can go back. Perfect Video doesn't do all of that, but what Perfect Video does do really, really well is crop videos, slice videos into smaller pieces in case you're gonna be posting on Instagram or Snapchat, and it also can resize videos rotate them and mirror them. That's all really, really great. And it's, you know, it, it can really come in handy if you're thinking about doing stuff like special effects or anything of that nature. What's that? Huh? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, you wanna talk about the audio elements. Audio elements are gonna take your production to the next level. That's music, that's sound effects, that's Foley. You can make some of them. I like to get all of my sound effects and really my music from the iTunes store. It's super simple. Again, seamless integration with apps like iMovie. It's 99 cents for a song, 99 cents for a sound effect. I mean, if you're spending all of this time and energy making a production, you're trying to make a Hollywood style movie, you're gonna need to buy some audio elements. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about recording Foley elements to, to, to instruct you the best practices for that with your phone. Buy some of them. Buy the Jeep door closing, buy the gates opening, the knock at the door, the walking down. As many audio elements as you can include in your story, it's only gonna make it that much better. But beware, those are tricky little bits to, to edit around in apps like, it, like iMovie. So what I suggest is 
make the whole thing, flesh it out, add those elements, really have them be the last bit. Do it in a separate project, save your file without the audio elements, re-upload it to a new project, add the audio elements, save it, re-upload it as a new project so that you have everything, and then add the music. That's gonna help you out a lot because, again, these files can get so big that it's just gonna slow your phone down. Listen, all the sneaky tips and tricks in the world can only get you so far. What's more important than anything when you're making a movie, when you're making content, when you're filming anything, is that you're passionate about it. You have a clear vision of what you want to do and you're working with like-minded individuals. It's just a fact that the smartphone, it can't rival some of today's best filmmaking and digital cinematography tools. Let's all accept that and move on until it can smirk. But if you really want to take your filmmaking to the next level, Full Sail University has degrees and courses on everything you need to know. Their bachelor's degree program, for example, emerges you in the world of filmmaking from every single angle. You'll gain hands-on experience while learning what it's like to work on a film from start to finish, giving you a feel for the role each crew member plays in a production. The Digital Cinematography Online Degree Program merges the artistic concepts of traditional filmmaking with the technical tools used in everything from documentary filmmaking to commercial production and web video. If you want to find out more about these programs and how to get started, it's simple. Let me tell you what to do. Visit www.fullsale.edu slash mplatco to get started. That's all you need to know. I'm M. Platko, Snapchat movie teller, Snapchat storyteller, filmmaker, influencer, and artist, and wearer of fine hats, signing out. Oh, yes. <laughs>